Good morning. This is Penny Lopez, and today is Tuesday, July 21st. And I want to go over a lot of things today to talk to women about breast cancer. And this is for women who, I'll talk a little bit about people who have not been diagnosed with breast cancer, but really this is for women who, really, who are going through breast cancer, who want to know what does that mean, what does it look like, and all that. Now, if you watched my other video the other day, which is breast cancer for family and friends, do's and don'ts, I kind of fell apart towards the end because I was only like five days into my diagnosis and of having breast cancer in my right breast. And, you know, that was kind of like my low day. I was really frustrated and everything else. Um, today... As you can see, my personality is more, this is me, more me. I'm more, I like to laugh, choke, talk, and all that stuff. So this is more me, but rule number one, expect the unexpected. Rule number two, be who you gotta be. Rule number three, every day is not a sunny day inside. It might be sunny outside, but it's not sunny inside. And it's okay because you know, or you will learn to know what you need to do to get through it. So you got to keep those things in mind because if you don't, people will drive you crazy. You do not have to be anyone but you. Don't let anyone else tell you what you need to do. They mean it from a place of love and well wishes, but there's some days you don't even want to get out of the bed or you're laying on the floor. So quick recap of my story. Um, I was watching the BET Awards and one evening on Sunday evening, um, in 2015, I can't remember the exact date what that was. It was only like two weeks ago. And I felt a sharp pain in my nipple of my right breast. So I went to go grab it and I brushed over my right breast, which was inflamed and red and hot. And it was a large lump and it measured about the size of two quarters. So I was like, oh no, what's going on? I'm, I'm so scared. I ran to my bedroom um, call my mom and dad crying to like, stop it. Just go to your primary care doctor and see what's going on. I went to my primary care doctor the next day who said this might be cystic. So, you know, because of how it just came on so quickly, no other type of symptoms. And so it was left at that. We we're going to go look at a mammogram and an ultrasound. So I want to talk about that. As for the mammogram and ultrasound, a lot of women just get mammograms each year who are over 40. I am 46. I just turned 46 on May 31st of this year. So less than two months ago, I just turned 46. Um, women who are 40 should get mammograms done every year. If you have dense breasts, that means thick, think of like dense fog. You can't see through the fog. So if you got dense breasts, they're thick and chunky, you need to ask your doctor, require your doctor to give you an, a prescription for an ultrasound as well. Why? Because people with de dense breasts like mine, mammograms don't always pick up even the smallest amount of any type of growths that are in your breasts. In fact, when I went for my mammogram, they had to mark where the lump was and show them where it was. So through the ultrasound imaging, we were able to see the magnitude and see that it was a four centimeter uh, mass. And then there's like a little smaller one right above the nipple, <clears throat> excuse me, on the right hand side. So the radiologist, I went and saw him the next day on that Wednesday and, excuse me, Tuesday. And I'm not gonna lie, when he told me it was an assist and it was a solid mass and it was serious, that I got it checked out to rule out it being cancerous. Um, I kind of passed out in his office. He didn't tell me to sit down. I have my laptop bag on my shoulders, going to go back to work in my purse. I'm thinking he's going to tell me, you know, it's a cyst, it's going to go away. It's just happened to get my period the same day. But no, he told me it was something more, could be more serious. And his voice was just one where I think I knew like, this is not going to be good. So I just went limp. He caught me, and I'm not a light girl, as you can see. Um, right now, I weigh 240 pounds. So I was like 239 because I lost weight. And I, um, he had to call for medical assistance, and they helped me up. 
and I finally came to it to crying hysterically because my first impression is there's a lump in your chest and if it is cancerous, you're going to die. Not true. So that's the first thing, not true. Um, there are things that cause that, that can be the other degrees of breast cancer. Has it metastasized? How far has it gone into the breast and both breasts? Is it into the chest wall? Has it traveled to your lymph nodes, which is the pathway to all the rest of your vital organs? Those are all the questions that have to be answered um, after you get a biopsy. So the next day I went to a breast surgeon, actually he's a general surgeon, 38 years in practice and he specializes with breast surgery. My primary care doctor had already set it up before I even got home. That was the one time that something was set up for me. Um, so I just want to tell you about that frustration and be prepared for it. Uh, so by Wednesday, I went to see the uh, surgeon, uh, Dr. Norman San Augustine in Morristown, New Jersey with Morristown Surgical Associates. I live in New Jersey. Uh, and he uh, looked at my area. He measured it and I was right, four centimeters. I was right, the two quarter size. There was a smaller one, a little bit like a one centimeter right below it, but it was an extension of the other. So... What he wanted to do was wait until that holiday weekend. It was July 4th. And then he said, we'll look at it on Monday to see if it reduced in size by putting on some compresses because it also coincided with my period. I just came off of doing IVF two months earlier and had a breast exam done through an IVF doctor who didn't pick up on the lump either. So here we are today. I got the biopsy done. The biopsy was performed by doing a core biopsy. You can do a needle aspiration when it's cystic and they think they're going to get fluid and test the fluid. But there was no fluid. It was definitely a solid mass. So the solid mass, they can either have the two choices. To do a core biopsy, which is a needle that once they put the needle into you and they snap the gun like, like a trigger, it opens up and pulls the tissue out. And that tissue was sent to pathology. He did five samples um, where the lump was, well, it's still there, where the mass is, and then an area, what's called a margin. So just think a little bit outside of the area where the mass is. So here's the mass, and then the margin area is going to be right here to see whether or not it's been invasive and it's gone outside. Some of the tissue outside of where the lump is, is now cancerous too. So that was done on that following Monday from the fourth. So what was the fourth one of? Saturday. So Sunday was the, f the fifth and Monday was sixth. Yes. So on July 6th, I had the biopsy done. July 13th, I got the results back from the biopsy, which said it was cancer. So it's, it was cancer and then uh, an aggressive type of cancer. So that means really have to treat it. From the moment that I found that lump, everything hurt on me. Um, so my back area hurt, stomach hurt, everything hurt. The day before that and all the months before that, I felt perfectly fine. I felt healthy, healthy, happy, going out on family trips and date nights with my husband. So there was nothing outside of that pain I had that night that made me grab my breast and feel that. So I had the breast biopsy done. The pathology report came back on the 13th of July, uh, last Monday, which said it was cancer. Uh, so the next step was to... Um, get two things have to happen at that point, which is your PET CT scan and a breast MRI. So the breast MRI is what's going to be when they shoot in um, a kind of dye into you to be able to see whether or not the, how invasive that looks, the breast tissue, breast wall and what it looks like. Um, so it's, it's a, uh, another extensive form of testing your breast that mammogram and ultrasound can't see. This is what pre-surgical procedures need to get, be performed so that this can be removed and they'll know where they're going, what they're doing and how they're going to treat you. The PET scan, CT scan is to see whether or not it has metastasized and traveled anywhere else in your body very scary to think about this. So let's just talk about 
Um, and here, this is the imaging order saying, okay, do these things. Let's talk about that. Um, I talked about good days and bad days. When the doctor told me that he wanted to, based on my symptoms, to the insurance company want to get the CT scan of my brain, chest, abdomen, and pelvis, it just threw me off completely. I was so upset, crying, fell on the floor, you name it, because who wants to think about that, traveling everywhere? I'm a mother, I have four children, um, I'm, I'm a young mom. I was a young mom at 16, so my oldest is 29, and my youngest is 21 in her last semester of college. Um, I have four grandchildren with a fifth on the way on the 14th of February, 2016. And I plan on being here to see all that happen. My daughter graduate, my grandchild being born, all that. But there are days when you really need help. Um, this right here is a problem with Zan, also known as Xanax. And this is Dexalant. And this is to Xanadine. Xanax, maybe it won't happen to you, but for me, which each one of those steps, I needed help. As strong as a person as I am, I was on the floor crying. And I needed to be able to get through my day and my life because I still have to work because I don't have that um, option to not work and our family will be able to have our financial bills met. So I have to work um, through this whole process of having breast cancer and being poked and prodded and tests and everything else. So my point with that is that if you need mental health aids, go to your primary care doctor and ask for Xanax or out of van, whatever it is you need to get you through. Now, my dose, usually they'll prescribe 0.25. I'm a heavy woman. I need an airplane dose because I'm scared of airplanes. And when I ride an airplane, I take a two milligram dose. But the the good the side about, the, the pros about Xanax is that you're going to be chill and that you'll say, you'll, co you'll compartmentalize everything. Like, okay, I have cancer. Okay, I need to get a CT scan, PET scan, to see if it traveled anywhere. Okay, I need a breast MRI. But you're not falling apart. You understand the process and you're, you, it's sad, but you understand it's necessary and you're able to function. Um, I don't take this every day. I might even take this just twice a week and sometimes I don't need it. Like today, you see I'm fine. It might be just a sleep because you might not get sleep. And you sleep is important for you to get rest and just not stress and worry. The point is, do what you need to do for you to survive. Because no one else is in this shell of a body but you. So it's not a bad thing. And I'm saying that because I'm a Christian woman. I'm a saved woman. And sometimes you'll even have people in your family and your church that might say, you just need more Jesus and, you know, don't take these medications. Well, this is what I say. If I was diabetic, would I not take Chanumet or take insulin? I would still take it. I still believe in God. I still praise and worship God, right? So do what's best for you. God has given man the intelligence to create these drugs to help us. Hmm? That's just my take on it. I said Dexalot because um, Xanax is a muscle relaxer as well. And when it relaxes your muscles, it tends to help cause heartburn and GERD, um, acid reflux in some people. So I was prescribed Dexalot um, and a 60 milligram of Dexalot, one capsule each day. There's Dexalot. And what Dexalot does is that it stops uh, that sphincter muscle from opening when the muscles are relaxing. That's what keeps you from having the acid from being able to travel up your esophagus and burn you. And it also repairs any burn you might have had from before. Excellent drug. Um, I know some people get like uh, Tums and Rolaids or whatever. No, this actually, not only does it stop it, it heals. It heals any type of um, acid 
that is um, scarring that might have happened before. So I love those two things. Uh, this one that I showed you before, this Tizanidine is a muscle relaxer as well. You can't take that and Xanax because you'll be sedated in a coma. But um, this is four milligrams, one to two tablets by mouth as needed at bedtime for muscle spasms. This does help me to sleep. It knocks me out. But I realize I'm not sleeping through the whole night with it, but maybe it might work for you better. But it will take away the pain that comes with the back pain that some women may get as a result of having the tumor and it growing. It tends to press against your spinal cord and cause you some back discomfort. I take hot baths. That helps a lot. Um, my husband rubs Bengay on my back. It smells like old people in our bedroom. And light, soft massages to that area. So also in my doctor's office, there was a center for well-being and wellness. And what I like about this one is that they offer treatments. Um, they also offer things like massages. And I think that's important to have um, what I like. They also offer oncology massages, um, mastectomy massages. So that's something that's good, too. These are just the copies of the, the orders I was going to show you that you might forget. The MRI with the breast and the contrast. So that's the MRI one. The CT of the head. That's that. The CT of the chest. The CT of the abdomen and pelvis. So with that, when you get the CT of those things, you get the IV contrast. And you've got to drink these. They're disgusting. I don't like it. But it was a necessary um, thing. So... They'll tell you how the process and how that works. And when you get a drink, how many? There were two of them. One you drink the night before. And then the day of, you take it, um, I think, an hour, half an hour. Then you bring your last half with you when you are getting your CT done at the time. And then they'll shoot the dye inside of you. And that will do the area they want. Um, I think that was everything about that that I want to cover and talk to you guys about today. So right now I've had the CTs done of all my body and I also have the um, breast MRI scheduled for Thursday. Once that's done, my surgeon, Dr. St. Augustine, will meet with the himself, the oncologist and the radiologist and they'll come up with a treatment plan. I don't know if that includes radiation first, chemo first, I don't know how that goes and or surgery first. I'll find that out when they call me and let me know. So, hey, I might be needing this annex again. You know, the point is, is that, you know, you will come to a point of working towards acceptance. Like I even lay hands on my my breast, the tumor, and I pray over it because I believe that God's going to heal my body. And it's just a journey where I've got to go through to get there. It's kind of like I'm facing a mountain. And on the other side of the mountain, it's victory. But I've got to go through that mountain. But God promises us that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We shall fear no evil because he's with us. And I don't know anything about you, but I know shadows scared me as a kid. They're bigger than you. They seem stronger. They're darker. They feel like they're unknown. They follow you so closely. They move just like you move. But they have no power but they give the illusion of power. That's why I believe that David had wrote that in that Psalm. So I'm trusting God for my total healing. And today I'm in a state of peace because right now I'm like, let's just get this done. Let's find out what's wrong. God, I pray that it has not traveled anywhere else. You know, I have made peace with the fact that I might lose a portion of my breast or all of it. I'm a double. Well, I might say triple D. I'm an E. I'm an E cup, so I've always had large breasts. Um, if it's going to keep me alive, I do what I need to do. My story is particularly interesting because eight years ago I had thyroid cancer and I had a total thyroidectomy uh, because even though the thyroid cancer was on my right side as well, um, there was some research done and decision made with my doctor, 
that I get the total thyroidectomy done so it won't try to come on the other side. I don't know if the same thing happens with breasts. I've heard a little thing, but I don't know if that's true, where sometimes you heal one breast, the other way it might try to mirror it later. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But for today, I'm telling you where I'm at on Tuesday, July 21st. This is where I'm at, and this is what's going on. So for you women to hang in there, family, love, support, anywhere you can get it from is so important. Don't expect everyone who you think should be there to be there. They're not. That was probably the hardest thing to know that some people just aren't going to be there. Guess what? Now you know. You didn't know? Now you know. Okay? And um, do what's best for you. Love you. Be, you have to just take everything in stages. Like I said, the next stage is finding out the results of these critical tests. And then the next stage is treatment. What that treatment plan looks like. I've, Like I said, I've come to terms with the possibility of losing um, a portion of my breast or both breasts, hair. Um, this is all my hair. It's not a weave. Um, and, but hair grows back. And if not, I'm determined to sport a baldy. People say, oh, you can get a wig. No, I'm going to sport a baldy and be fierce. I'm going to own who I am because naked I came into this world and naked I shall return. That's how I feel. You do what's best for you. Some people don't even think I should share my story on Facebook or on social media like YouTube. But my philosophy is to, to each one, teach one. And if I can leave anything with any women is that what you might go through and that you're normal. It's normal what you're going through. You're fighting for your life. People don't understand. You're just thinking about things down the road because we're such caregivers and nurturers. And they don't get it. They don't have to get it. Stop explaining it. You're going to drive yourself crazy. So peace, love, happiness, and God first. And everything else, everything else, I promise you, will come. Take care.